Welcome to Fireside Giants. My name is Alex. I'm my co-host here, Anthony Rivardo. Today, we're going to look at one of the most underappreciated players on the Giants, and it's Blake Martinez, our middle linebacker, a guy that set a record last season in Giants franchise history with the most tackles ever in franchise history, which is a pretty big deal considering we had Alec Ogletree with about half that much playing the same exact position two years ago. And Blake Martinez, when we signed him to a three-year deal, we kind of didn't really know what to expect. We know he was uh, kind of a big run stopper. I call him personally the mitigator because he mitigates big plays. He really helps <laughs> bottle up that second level for the Giants and stop running backs from getting past that second level and breaking off big runs. Um, but he's also kind of under undervalued as a uh, pass coverage guy. You know, he got stuck in zone coverage a lot when he was with Green Bay. But now the Giants kind of let him play man uh, against against running backs in the flat, against um, running backs just kind of running short hooks. And we'll see that in some of the clips that we're going to show you in a little bit. But Blake Martinez, man, one of my favorite players on this team. He really stepped up last year and established that linebacker core. Without him, we'd be in big trouble at that position. But now we have some sort of solidification. We feel good about him moving forward. Anthony, you know, how are you doing today, my friend? And what are you thinking about our guy, Blake? Yeah, I'm loving what Blake Martinez has brought to the Giants, of course. You know, when they signed him, I wasn't too crazy about the signing because I looked at the defense and I thought – before I really knew what Patrick Graham had in store for us this past season, which was a phenomenal defensive scheme that was super creative and played to all of the strengths of his players, I was saying the Giants needed a pass coverage linebacker. We've seen them have some run defenders in the past, but no one has a really good pass coverage linebacker. So when they went with Blake Martinez in free agency, I was a little bit disappointed because he is your prototypical run defending linebacker who can pass rush as well. But then, of course, I watched him play in this defense, and I watched what Patrick Graham did with Blake Martinez, and he did a phenomenal job making sure that Blake Martinez was playing to his strengths. He never asked him to do too much in coverage, never stretched him thin in that regard. He never put him in a situation where he had to cover um, one-on-one and make a big play like he was asked to do in Green Bay, asked to be some sort of coverage linebacker, because that's just not what he is. He is your prototypical run defender, um, and he actually is a pretty good pass rusher as well from the inside linebacker position. So... I, I really like what Blake Martinez brings to the table for the Giants, and I think this past season he really did establish him, establish him himself as one of the best linebackers, inside linebackers in the NFL just because he is so good in run defense, and he does do some good things in pass coverage when he's not asked to do it too consistently. So um, I think he did just a really phenomenal job this past year, and I only see him getting better um, year after year with the Giants. Yeah, and he really was a tremendous player for us this past year. And just to list some of his statistics off, 151 combined tackles, and he's gone four consecutive seasons with over 140 combined tackles, 86 solos, 65 assists, nine tackles for a loss, six QB hits. And I'll tell you what, the guy averaged almost 10 tackles per game for the Giants this past year, which is just tremendous, you know, in terms of um, being that guy. Like I said, he mitigates big plays. He, he shows up. He's very, very good at diagnosing plays as they're happening. Um, and that's what makes him such a good linebacker. You know, he's not, I mean, he's really physically imposing. He's a strong guy. He has some speed to him. Um, he can lay, he can lay, uh, some nice hits out, but I'll tell you what, his intelligence as a football player really stands out to me because you'll see it in the film. The second things start to unravel around him, he die. He, he does not miss a lot. You know, he does not wrongly diagnose plays very often. And it's really good to see a linebacker as Alec Ogletree found himself in just the wildest of positions. He'd have the occasional nice interception, one-handed grab or whatever, but he had that one season with like five interceptions. But we're talking about a player that ha is, has essentially a 70 uh, tackle differential between him and Alec Ogletree. So Blake Martinez really is that much better as a run stopper. Um, last season, he missed 6.2% of his tackles, which was a career low for him. And th think about it for a second, 151 total tackles, and he missed 6% of those. You know, that is a tremendous number when you think about like how shifty players are in the NFL, running backs, slot receivers, even quarterbacks at times, such shifty players. And for Blake Martinez to be that good and to have that low of a missed tackle rate really showcases his fundamentals, his ability to diagnose plays and his, his, you know, his knowledge of each individual player and what kind of moves they like to make so that he can be in a good position to react. Um, and Blake Martinez, man, he, I kind of see him as the glue for this defense, right? Because if you lose Blake and, and I'll tell you what, another thing that really stands out to me is he hasn't missed a game in four years, right? He's played 16 games for four consecutive seasons. And that stands out to me as well. And he had two, he had three sacks last year. He had a career high, two forced fumbles, five passes defended the most since 2017. He had an interception, um, and he created a couple more turnovers, uh, for his teammates. So I think for the most part, we're looking at a player that without him, 
this defense almost falls apart because who replaces him? Reggie Ragland, you know, last year was David Mayo. You know, we don't really have a player of that magnitude that can come in and fill Blake Martinez's role. We we saw what happened. I think he missed a couple reps. Um, maybe it was against the Browns. He had like a little a, a back injury or something. He missed a couple snaps and then came back. Um, and I'll tell you what, we felt that loss. You feel that loss when you miss your best run stopper at the second level, Anthony. You know, so this upcoming season with the with the expectation that the scheme might develop a little bit, we're going to be going towards more of a cover one scheme or man coverage based. How do you see Blake Martinez um, and his role changing within this scheme? Because we know that Patrick Graham said this this team and this defense is going to take a more cover one, cover uh, zero, blitzing more, relying on the secondary to hold up in coverage, a lot of man coverage. How does Blake Martinez's role uh, change because of that? Is he going to be more inclined to be more a uh, man coverage type of linebacker or is he going to be playing more zone or is he strictly against the run here? Yeah, one thing that I want to say, though, to your point about the depth behind Blake Martinez is that it's really bad. They really don't have a lot of linebacker depth on this defense right now. Um, I I have to imagine that during preseason cuts, the Giants are going to be looking for backup linebackers because two things that I've noticed when I take a look at this roster, I just did a deep dive for a Tony's Takes episode. Um, they don't really have anyone that can fill the Jabril Peppers role. God forbid Jabril Peppers gets injured. And they have some guys that can fill the Blake Martinez role not very well. And then, of course, behind Blake Martinez at LB2, that weak side linebacker, the Tay Crowder role, which is going to be Tay Crowder and Jabril Peppers, that's really thin as well. So the defense in terms of linebackers is really thin. So I feel like the Giants need to find someone to pick up off the streets and throw onto this roster between now and the start of the regular season. But to go and ahead and discuss your other point with where Blake Martinez might fit in with a more man heavy cover one scheme. I think that's when you see him start to blitz more um, 2018 with the green Bay Packers. That was when Patrick Graham was the linebackers coach there. I, I believe they were playing a lot more of that three, four defense, a lot more of that blitzing blitz, heavy man coverage defense. And he blitzed 61 times that season with uh, Patrick Graham as a linebackers coach. And Patrick Graham did have some say in the scheme there as well, because he is such a bright mind. Um, he had 61 blitzing attempts there, and that fell all the way down to 24 in 2019 with the Packers, which was your obvious indicator. This is not a good scheme fit anymore. They changed their defense, and Blake Martinez is not a fit here, which is why ultimately he left in the 2020 offseason to go to the Giants. Now, his blitz number went back up to 43, but it wasn't quite at that 61. The reason for that being that the Giants played a lot of zone coverage last season. Prim primarily, they played uh, cover three and cover two. I believe they were number four in the NFL in cover um, three and number two in the NFL in cover two. So they were just playing ridiculous amounts of cover two and cover three, allowing Blake Martinez to play those middle hook zones um, and occasionally pass rush as well when they do switch into man coverage. But now if they are going to be playing more man coverage, I don't think they're, they're going to play him to his weakness and have him cover more, play more man coverage than he should. I think they're just going to have him be a blitzing inside linebacker and then move um, a take router. You know, he's a little bit better in coverage or um, a guy like uh, Jabril Peppers into that weak side linebacker role to play that uh, man coverage role. So I think that you're going to see Blake Martinez be more of an interior blitzer from the linebacker position, um, play more man coverage just because the, the team is playing more man coverage. But I think you also see him, get that blitz total maybe back up to around 60. And I think that's exciting because he has proven to be a very efficient pass rusher from the inside linebacker position. So I'm excited to see if that is the role that he takes on this year. And I, I have to suspect if they are playing more man coverage, that will be the role he takes on. Yeah. And, you know, I'm, I just kind of stumbled across a, a few different interesting points, right? So PFF ranked the Giants as the 15th best linebacker unit in the NFL. <laughs> and the craziest part about that is that it's just because of Blake Martinez, right? They ranked the unit for the Giants, the unit involving Blake Martinez, Reggie Raglan, and, uh, I mean, we don't have David Mayo anymore. I think they might transfer Carter Coughlin over to a middle linebacker spot. You know, we don't have much depth there. And we have Tay Crowder. They ranked them 15th. That's how good of a year Blake Martinez had last year. And I'll tell you this right now. This is a really interesting formation. You know, we talk about nickel. We talk about dime. But the Giants used seven defensive backs on 59 plays last year, right? That was third most in the league. The Patriots, 184. Um, the Steelers, 84. And the Dolphins were fourth with 14. So the Giants used seven DBs. And they might actually do that even more next year because their secondary is going to be so good. They can really just flush the secondary with guys, let those interior offense, those interior defensive linemen like Dexter, Leonard Williams, Danny Shelton, or maybe even use an outside linebacker like Zizo Jalari and just run stunts on the inside trying to get pressure. 
and then have your secondary just hold it down. And then you have one lone linebacker in Blake Martinez who can mitigate and really watch uh, running backs or whether, you know, whatever his role might be in that specific scheme. But the Giants ran seven DBs at times, which is actually insane because you really don't have much of a pass rush there, which tells you how confident they are in their interior defensive line to put pressure and soak up double teams and still break through. So we're going to see some really creative uh, schematics here from Patrick Graham. I'm really intrigued by what he's going to put forth in this upcoming season because we have so much personnel and so much strengths in the starting level guys that he can really get creative and, and kind of pull stuff out of the works um, and test different things during the preseason to see if it translates. And I'm really excited to see what he can muster, um, you know, in terms of next season, Anthony. But do you have any last any last thoughts uh, before we move on to the, to the film review? I'm ready to move on to the film review. I know that we have a lot of good clips that show just how versatile Blake Martinez can be. We have some clips of him in coverage. We have him forcing some fumbles, doing a lot of stuff, especially as a blitzer as well. So I'm excited to dive into that and really take a look at Blake Martinez. Awesome. All right, let's do it. All right. So right off the bat here, we're against Cleveland. You'll see Blake Martinez in the middle of the field, middle linebacker. You'll see him there usually. And this is just a play action screen to Kareem Hunt. And like you'll see throughout this video, Blake Martinez's biggest strength is his ability to diagnose plays, right? He sees this and he's so good at readjusting his body, getting into great position and helping his defense mitigate these big plays. Like the, I call him the mitigator because he, if he's not there and he doesn't diagnose this property, Alec Ogletree would already be on the other side of the field, bought into this play action. He'd be stuffing the run, but Blake Martinez realizes what's happening. He he hesitates for a second because he sees Baker Mayfield sells the ball. He notices Kareem Hunt coming out the backside. He gets into perfect position, and he tackles him for a loss. That is what good linebackers do. Good linebackers evaluate the field in front of them. They don't make ag too aggressive situations or don't, too aggressive plays. They wait, be patient, and then they make plays, and they get in the right positioning to, to maximize um, you know where they are on the field. And I think Blake Martinez has a very good combination of – tackling ability, um, athleticism, and intelligence to be able to diagnose this entire play. And, you know, when you have a guy like Kareem Hunt, he also knows the personnel. Kareem Hunt is one of the best guys when it comes to running uh, running back screens and getting open in the receiving game, and he knows this. He knows he has to keep an eye on Kareem Hunt at all times when it comes to this, and he sees the offensive lineman starting to pull, and he gets out in front and diagnoses this play per to perfection, and it just shows you just how good of a player he is in terms of the intelligence. Yeah, I have a couple of key takeaways from this play. Um, firstly, when was the last time the Giants had a linebacker that can do this? You know, it's been a long time since we've seen a linebacker diagnose a play like this and stuff it in the backfield on a screen. Secondly, if you do rewind this to the wide angle, I'll go ahead and do that. Um, you'll notice that the Giants here are playing cover two man. So, again, we were just discussing what this Giants defense might look like in 2021, knowing that they're trying to shift to a more man-heavy scheme, right? That's what they've said. That's what Patrick Graham has said, and that's what the signing of Adoree Jackson outside indicates. Well, you're going to see Blake Martinez right here in man coverage. He's manned up on Kareem Hunt, and he keeps his eyes in the backfield, keeps his eyes on Kareem Hunt, and just makes the play. So really good instincts there, good man coverage by Blake Martinez on that play. And as Alex mentioned, just phenomenal elite play recognition that the Giants haven't seen from their inside linebacker position in a very long time. Yeah, and, and you know, they're running pre-motion here to see, a pre-snap motion to see if this is man coverage in the first place. And basically what they're hoping, because they know, they probably know that Blake Martinez is manned up against Kareem Hunt here. Um, they What they really want is for him to bite on the play action. Because if he gets bought, if he bites on the play action and he gets stuck in the middle of that offensive line and he can't get out to the edge, this is a home run play for Kareem Hunt, right? So if he is too aggressive and he gets up to that center level, you see the center speed, uh, kind of eyeing him right now. He wants him to get there. He That center wants him to come into the middle there, but he notices this is play action. The center gets left behind. They're hoping that Blake Martinez overcommits, and then the center ends up trying to catch up and trying to get to him, but it's, it's too late at that point. Blake Martinez already gets around the edge. He's faster than the offensive lineman. Great uh, job taking him down, and, and that's just negative, a negative play. You know, that's... Like Joe Judge says, football is a game of inches. Every play counts, and you never know. That could be a third down. That could be a second and long, and that could be interception next play because they're trying to take a big threat or trying to make a big play, take a risk, and then interception. You never know. Things always co um, compound into others. But here we are against Dallas now. Let's take a look. He's actually right over. I think he's almost over the nose right here, and he's blitzing, right? And they basically, they're using the running back to try and stop him. They're trying to get him to do it, but he's just too strong, right? He's, he's actually a superior athlete to a lot of, guys similar to his size um, in terms of running backs could be even tight ends. 
he sheds blocks pretty damn well. And he runs this, this, I think it's uh, Tony Pollard and he runs right through him, man. Completely destroys him. He puts, I think Tony Pollard actually does a split. That's how badly he runs him over. Let's take a look at the all 22 angle. Yeah. So I, I really like this play because you do see his power as he pretty much bull rushes through Tony Pollard. And I do like how the giants are using him here. Um, kind of having that, Two, four, five front. This is a nickel front, and they're double A gap. They're stuffing the A gaps here with these linebackers, with the money backer and Jabril Peppers, and then of course with Blake Martinez. Um, and I really love this defensive formation because it gets the most out of the personnel that the Giants have, and it allows Blake Martinez to use his really good instincts as a pass rusher through the A gap here. So he is lined up between the center and the guard, which is exactly where you might want him. The pass protection here, the ski, the the protection call is perfect. This is exactly what you want. You want Tony Pollard to pick this up because everything else is blocked pretty much with this blitz. But Blake Martinez just says, no, not today. You can't put a running back on me, runs through him and gets the sack, which just shows absolutely physical, you know, great pass rusher who can just get off blocks, um, especially when you have a running running back trying to protect him on him. Um, but also, I just really like what the what Patrick Graham did with the scheme here in terms of blitzing um, a four man front like that. I think it was really, really well done. Yeah, and you can see how much those interior defenders, how much attention they draw, you know, right to the left. I think it's 95. Is that uh, BJ Hill? Um, and you can see right to the, or maybe it's, uh, do you know what was 95? Do you remember who that is? 95 on the Giants is BJ Hill, yes. Okay, yeah, so that's what I thought. So right next to the left of Blake Martinez is BJ Hill. You see how much attention these big guys draw because they have to double team him, right? They double team BJ Hill right there, and it pretty much leaves Blake Martinez wide open. You see Leonard Williams on the outside. He's getting double teamed because Carter Coughlin is, you know, running a – he's just fake blitzing. He's dropping back into coverage to cover the flats. And it just, it just shows you, like, when you have those big imposing interior defenders, it allows your linebackers, it allows your strong safeties like your Bill Peppers, allows your, even your slot corners to execute blitzes a lot more efficiently. 1v1 matchups. Uh, Blake Martinez has probably 30, 40 pounds, maybe not 40 pounds, maybe 20, 30 pounds on the running back here. And he has great balance, superior athlete. He runs right through him, no problem. And you already see BJ Hill starting to put pressure on Andy Dalton despite him being double teamed. Blake Martinez just has to catch up to him. And then you have Jabril Peppers right behind him, who's now chasing him as well. Like, that's what I love about Patrick Graham's schemes. He keeps it very creative. He does not, there's no, there's no like, like it's not, it's not all bells and whistles. But I'll tell you what, what he runs is so unpredictable because it's so it's always changing. You know, Blake Martinez might be blitzing on this play, but the next play he might be faking it and then dropping back into into shallow coverage to cover the middle of the field. You know, he's just always changing. You can never tell what they're doing. The running the, like this is what kind of the Patriots do on offense. They have the same formations, but every formation the running the wide receivers might be running completely different routes, which really creates a lot of confusion. So you don't know if you're lined up in the same formation. You're like, okay, I know what they're usually running here, but instead they're running all different route trees. So it's that's kind of what the Patriots do on offense. I like that Patrick Graham kind of does that on defense. You know, he runs the same formations, but they're always different. They're all, all the players are doing different things. So it's like you can never really predict what's going to be happening at any given moment. Let's move on to the Buccaneers play here. So this is another just a great, a great uh, play from Blake Martinez to diagnose is happening. Uh, Ronald Jones catches a pass here um, and he makes a football move and Blake Martinez right spot, right time goes for the football, creates a fumble and the giants have a red zone opportunity. This is a play. These are the type of plays that change the course of a game. The giants almost won this game. I think they lost by two points. If you beat the Buccaneers here, they're a playoff. The giants are in the playoffs if they win this game, you know, in the next season, if DJ hit the, hits those deep passes, you have Kenny Galladay, Kadarius Tony, Saquon back. You have a Dory Jackson on defense. You beat one of these really good teams in the middle of the season, you know, and then and the rest of the NFC East has to play the Buccaneers. You're looking at a good a good chance of uh, walking away against with a win against a very quality team like Tampa. That's the difference between making the playoffs and missing the playoffs at times. Blake Martinez here dropping back into zone. He recognizes this pass is going underneath to, to Ronald Jones. Bam, he gets there and he creates a fumble and he gets his offensive opportunity to score. Yeah, and this is um, another play where we'll talk about the defensive scheme, the defensive formation, because I was actually just before we started recording this talking with Alex about an upcoming Tony's Takes video where I'm going to be diving into the Giants' different packages on defense and their sub packages. And this is the nickel 335 that I was just discussing with Alex before we started recording. Um, and I pointed out to him that that Sam linebacker, which is played by number 51 right now on this play, is very much a hybrid in this formation where he does a lot of coverage and he also blitzes off the edge right here. And I also mentioned to Alex how when they're in this 3-3-5, three, three, 
95% of the time they are playing zone defense. That's a lot of cover two and a lot of cover three, which just allows Blake Martinez to sit in those hook zones, read what's in front of him and react, which is exactly what you want Blake Martinez doing, reading and reacting. I think that's what he's best at, and he does it right here. He reads this little dump off pass to Ronald Jones, reacts, dives on it, um, and makes the play and, of course, punches the ball out, which is a little bit lucky. But I just love his zone instincts there, how he bites on this uh, play or really bites down on that route. Um, it really gives Ronald Jones nowhere to go after the catch. And so much so that as soon as Ronald Jones turns around, thinks he has all the space around him, doesn't realize that Blake Martinez is already breathing down his neck and punching this football out. And then, of course, great job recovering it by Darnay Holmes there. So really nice zone coverage instincts by Blake Martinez. I like him a lot more as a zone coverage linebacker than I do as a uh, man coverage linebacker. Though we did just see a nice man coverage play by him. Um, but it does show that maybe last year I was a little harsh on his uh, coverage abilities and I, he is much better in coverage than I maybe realized. And as I dive into this film from this past season, I am realizing that he did make a lot of good plays in coverage. And this is just another one of them. Yes, exactly. Right. I mean, also I, I just want to point out a couple different things irrelevant to Blake Martinez for a second. You know, look at, look at the four guys the giants have on the defensive line right now. They have Carter Coughlin, Dexter Lawrence, Dalvin Tomlinson, and BJ Hill on the five tech on the outside. If you, if you fast forward to this upcoming year, you have a vastly different group right here. You know, you're, you're they're kind of playing two eyes here in the middle of the, in the middle of the uh, in the trenches. Um, you have Leonard Williams, Dexter Lawrence, Aziz Ojolari, Leonard uh, Lorenzo Carter. Could be a, a variety of different guys. But look at look at Carter Coughlin over here um, against Tristan Wirfs. Look what he does to him. I didn't really see it at first, and then I watched it again. I mean, it looks like Tristan Wirfs might might trip here, but he puts him on his ass. To be honest, puts him right on his ass and. That is tremendous to me because Joe Judge, and he says this a lot, he wants every player to have an impact. And I was thinking about this this morning, and I was thinking, you know, Joe Judge, every single player, whether you're a rookie, whether you're a veteran, whether you're this or that, you have to have an impact in some way. And I look back at the 2007 Super Bowl, and you look at Ahmad Bradshaw, you look at the 2010 Super Bowl, all of our rookies had significant impact in those seasons to help us get there. The Giants drafted players who are going to make an impact this upcoming year. And Aaron Robinson, even if it's a special teams guy, Rogarius Williams, Gary Brightwell, um, Zizo Jalari, Kadarius Tony, they are all going to play big roles, no matter what it is in, in terms of their own context. And I think that the Giants did got so much out of players like Carter Coughlin last year. Fast forward to this upcoming year when you have Zizo Jalari, who we know is a better player, Ellerson Smith, who we know is probably a more refined product than Carter Coughlin coming out of uh, you know coming out of Minnesota. I think that we're we're in a good spot, Anthony. I think that we're in a pretty good spot with Blake Martinez is going to look in front of him and he's going to see four guys who are getting it done and not a guy who's a seventh round pick or Jabal Shared who was a practice squatter off Jacksonville. He's going to see Azizo Jalari. He's going to see Leonard Williams. He's going to see Dexter Lawrence. He's going to see Danny Shelton. He's going to see Allison Smith, Lorenzo Carter, Ocean Exhibit is all guys who are far better than what we had last year. And I think that's going to help him even more just be a better player and give him more opportunities to, to showcase his talents. Absolutely. And I really think that the pieces that the giants have put around Martinez do complement him really well and will allow him to continue to thrive in this defensive front. Okay. So we're shifting over here to Washington. Another coverage play here. Uh, Blake Martinez is going to get an interception. It's kind of a really bad throw. Um, and also the running back trips and falls, but what I did notice on this play, again, um, Blake Martinez sitting in that hook zone that I think he's pretty good at. And, of course, just reading and reacting. He's jumping on this route before the running back trips and falls. He's already jumping on it and seeing it and reading it. You see him right there, his instincts. He was right already place, moving right into time. position. Exactly. Right place, right time. But it wasn't like out of luck. He was moving into that position, making sure he was in the right spot just in case that ball did go over the running back's head like it did or just in case the running back caught it. He could maybe bite down, punch it out like he did against Ronald Jones in the clip that we just saw. So, again, you're seeing him play the same coverage, perfectly executed, and this time it results into an interception. It, it, look, this is Blake Martinez to a T, guys. Intelligent player. He's in the right place at the right time. Half of half of being a good football player is positioning, right? The athleticism is secondary. If you're if you you could be the most athletic guy in the field, but if you are in the wrong place all the time, you're never gonna make a play, right? If you're running the wrong routes, you're never gonna make a play. If you're a linebacker, the most physically imposing linebacker on the field, and you're never around the player with the football, you're never gonna make a play. It doesn't matter how athletic you are. 
You know what I mean? It's like if you're a javelin thrower, you walk up to throw the javelin, you forget the javelin. It doesn't matter. So when you have Blake Martinez, not only is he a physically imposing player, he's a very good athlete, but he's also very smart and a very good at being in the right place at the right time and making sure he puts himself in a position to succeed. And here's here's a, a perfect example of that. He's just playing zone. He's reading the quarterback size. He sees, I think it's McKissick, come out of the backfield here. And the second he sees him breaking away, he knows this is the check down. This is the check down throw. And he's like, okay, I'm just going to run up and make a play. And even if he catches this, it's for a yard, two yards maximum. McKissick isn't going anywhere. He's already stumbling over himself. And Blake Martinez is like, all right, I'm just going to be in the right place, right time, and make a play. And and he ends up pretty much cashing in on, on his gold's worth um, of positioning right there. So it's, it's a great opportunity for him to pad the stats uh, off a bad throw from Alex Smith. And I'll tell you what. He'll take that every day of the week. This is this is a play that you know he has to make um, as a good linebacker in the NFL. But you expect good players to make this. I would I wouldn't expect Alec Ogletree to make that play. No beef to Alec Ogletree, but you know you're they, definitely they beefing with Alec Ogletree. You can't stop mentioning him and how bad he's he ruining the first yeah, portion of my name. He definitely <laughs> <laughs> he definitely gave you some bad PTSD when he was a linebacker of the Giants. Well, you just see the difference. Right now. You know what I mean? You, you, see the, you see the difference between good and bad. And it's like the contrast is very much in front of your eyes when you're watching it on film. You look at even any other player on the roster. You look at Leonard Williams compared to, I don't know, Olivier Vernon. Or you look at, um, I don't know, James Bradbury compared to Isaac Yadam. Like both sides of the – you're just watching this like yin and yang. And then you have Blake Martinez and Alec Ogletree. And it's like we went from absolute duty – to a really great player who's holding this defense together in the middle of the field. He helped us. I mean, look, that entire unit ranking 15th <laughs> for all linebacker units in the NFL, it's just because of him. It's only because of one Absolutely. singular player, which is a tr- – and the, the Giants have very little depth, right? And that is what stands out to me the most. He he is that good that he makes the Giants an above-average team in the unit, that entire unit above average, just a singular player. That makes – you know, that really stood out to me. So – um, I thought that was pretty cool, but let's head over to the next clip here. Um, we're against the Browns again. I think this is a goal line play first and five on the goal line. And again, Blake Martinez just making another great play using his, his instincts, diagnosing the play. He's leaning forward again, the mitigator. He does not let guys get to the second level or get past the second level. You know, he's always there right place, right time. Just watch, just watch his eyes. He's looking at the ball. Look at him. He's like a freaking Hawk. He's watching that guy. He, he shifts it and fills that gap. You know, his, his, he's like gap control. He fills those open gaps. He makes sure that the, that that running back, if he even, look, the running back might get by him, but he's going to stall him long enough for, for help to get there. You know what I mean? So that's his job. But the thing is, 6.2% missed tackle rate. Blake Martin, Martinez does not let guys get by him very often. He's also a fantastic tackler. So, you know, you love to see it here. Another just great run-stopping play. The Giants have one of the best run-stopping defenses in the NFL last year, and I think it's only going to get better as our coverage improves, and now we have a couple more outside linebackers to really seal the edge. Yeah, I think what you see on this play is just, again, what I was talking about earlier, the prototypical uh, linebacker that you get from Blake Martinez, just a perfect run-defending play right there where you just see him read and go from gap to gap until he finally finds the one to shoot and he makes the play. I think it's just you know really well done. He's lined up there in the middle of the field, and he's just reading and reacting. Um, the fullback probably should have taken him. He takes the um, outside linebacker there instead or the corner. Um, should have went for Martinez, obviously, but Martinez just blows this play up for a tackle for loss. And it's just a job well done. It's exactly what you want to see your inside linebacker do. Just read the offensive line, read the running back, and watch where he's going, and then bite down and make the play. And it's perfectly executed. He times it perfectly because it almost looks like he's hiding behind the offensive line, behind his guys, so that the the fullback doesn't see him. You know what I mean? It's like the fullback, he's looking, but Blake Martinez is kind of hiding behind that, that cluster of guys right there, and he waits for that fullback to get by him, and then he jumps in there and gets it. It's just like... Impeccable timing from Blake Martinez. He understands uh, timing, diagnosing the play, and waiting for his opportunity to strike. And he fills that gap. This is a without him there. This is an easy walk-in touchdown. You know what I mean? Like that's the difference between good and bad. Alec Ogletree would be on the other side sipping a lemonade on the bench. So again, <laughs> random shots at Alec Ogletree, but he deserves it after what he put us through, especially after we traded for him in the first place. Um, and then he went to the Jets, practice squatted for the Jets, and then they cut him from the practice squad. Talk about talk about going from zero to hundred real quick, or hundred to zero. Went from starting linebacker on the Giants to a practice squatter who couldn't even make the practice squad on the freaking Jets. Okay, 
That pisses me off. And we traded a ton of stuff for him and we're paying him over $10 million a year. Unreal. Okay, let's take a look at the last clip here against uh, the Rams. Little play action, diagnosing, screens. I think it's Robert Woods. It's Cooper Cup. Cooper Cup. Cooper Cup. And again, just another phenomenal play where you see Blake Martinez's read and reactability. And just the way that he is so disciplined is what I notice here. And what I've noticed as a theme for most of these plays, how disciplined his eyes are. When he has an assignment, he just sticks to it. And that's why he's in position to make all these plays. Because the whole idea here for what the Los Angeles Rams are trying to do offensively is they're trying to get everyone to bite on this play action to the run and get everyone to go that way. So what they're trying to do is have Blake Martinez start to move over that way to defend the run. But he just is so disciplined with his eyes in the backfield, reads that it's a play action and stays on his assignment, sticks to his man, and then makes this tackle on the flat for a loss, which is just phenomenal. This is just the discipline that you need from an inside linebacker. And what I'm going to say here in line with what Alex has been saying, if this were Alec Ogletree, I don't think that he's making this play. I think that he's trying to shoot a gap and make a play and run the fence for this play action. And then, of course, you just have Cooper Cup wide open in the flat for like a 20-yard gain. That's what we've seen in the past from the Giants linebackers. But now with Blake Martinez, just so smart, so disciplined, the way that he reads the quarterback and the running back in the backfield here and then sticks to his assignment and makes the play. That's what you love to see. That's always the idea for a defense. You have to stick to your assignment. You have to just do your job and all the other pieces will fall into place. That's what you see on this play. Phenomenal play by Blake Martinez. Yeah, I also want to point out here. There are three players, right? There are three receivers in the vicinity where Blake Martinez is. So if you're looking at Blake Martinez right now, there is Cooper Cup, who runs a little zig, turns around, goes to the flats. You have two guys. You see, Anthony, you see the two top of your screen. There's two more players right here, right? So Blake Martinez has to make a decision. Who is he covering? You know, he's watching the football all the way through. He sees a play action. He sees that ball come back to Jared Goff. And he knows, you know, this is obviously going to be a rollout little screen. But look, there's three guys coming across in that same vicinity. There's two guys in the middle of the field. I think it's Gerald Everett. Um, I can't tell. Maybe uh, Ren- Josh Reynolds. He, I mean, Jared Goff has three options here. And Blake Martinez has to pick the right one. And yeah, he cool. does. One thing that I'll say that might be coming into play here, can't know this for a fact. This is more speculation. This could be a product of great film review. This could be that Blake Martinez has watched a lot of films, seen this play on film before from the Los Angeles Rams and knew exactly who knew exactly who was running into the flat and running the route on this play knew that it was going to be Cooper cup. Honestly, I wouldn't be surprised if that's that's exactly what happened. I mean, these to be able to diagnose plays like this, you are watching a crap load of film, right? Cause he does this. Look, it's, it's different if you do it occasionally, but he does it every game. You know what I mean? He sees every single game, what the, what the opposing team is doing. So you have to imagine he is he is watching a ton of film to be able to see exactly what's happening and know what's going to be happening in the middle of a play. Um, and that's what stands out to me the most. is It's not like a every other game or every couple of games. It's every game he knows what's happening, and he diagnoses things 99% of the time correctly. And he, and he picks the one guy out of three open players here that, he, that Jared Goff is going to. You know, this is – I mean, if I look, there's three guys here. There's one there. There's two up top. I mean, if you're if you're asking me, this is a complete Blake Martinez understanding the play. He's seen this on film. He knows where it's going, um, and and I think that's really what stood out to me the most. So, Blake Martinez, guys, that's that's the end of the film review. But I'll tell you what, he stands out on every single play for the most part. You know, even in coverage, even even the, even the plays that he doesn't p- particularly do well on, he still is an impact. You know, he's it's not it's nothing like um, consistent. He might have a bad play, but he comes back and makes a great one on the next one. You know, he doesn't let it affect him while some players might, might kind of use that momentum negatively. Blake Martinez is the glue that keeps the defense together without him. Our, our linebacker core is, is thin as ice, right? You know, it's it's not good. So I'm really excited to see what Blake can do with even better personnel around him in the future. And that's really what excites me the most about this defense coming, uh, coming up this season is that we have so many great players. How can they make each other better? Um, But my friends, Thank you so much for tuning into Fireside Giants and check, checking out Blake Martinez with us. Let us know in the YouTube comments what you think about Blake and if you think he's going to have an even better season coming off his best year to date in 2020, of course. Uh, but make sure to subscribe below on YouTube. 
Apple, Spotify. Make sure to turn notifications on as always and join our membership program. You know, we got Anthony cranking out Tony's take videos for the members. Those come out early. We're going to be doing some um, obviously live streams and stuff when the season rolls around in training camp and more news is coming out right now. We're just, you know, figuring, uh, give you guys some really cool stuff to look at in terms of film reviews and really taking a look at some of the more impactful players on this team that don't get enough attention all the time. But as always, thank you so much. We'll catch you guys on the next video. 